I'm Ali, this is Weaver, and we run uh, something that I don't even really know what it is, Detour Scotland. We met at university, didn't we Ali? Yes! When we looked like this. We actually first got to know each other properly in uh, at Air 3. We ended up doing a radio show. Yep. Uh, which involved getting lots of new Scottish bands into the studio. The way to sort of keep doing what we were doing, we figured out, was to sort of put on gigs and podcasts and stuff yeah. like that. And so we started this thing called Detour. Uh, one of the things that we did was called a kidnap, where we put a band in a van and took them to a random place and made them play with a full generator and things like and that. And they literally had no idea where they were going. Yeah, and we had, we filmed it. The videos really took off and the gigs really took off. We just wanted to put on gigs that were a bit different because, you know, you go to any sort of local band gig or what have you and uh, somebody's put on a CD and then a band muddles on, plays their thing, leaves and then you've got half an hour wait, get a pint, uh, another band goes on and that's it and then you bugger off. We wanted to sort of have this whole experience uh, where you come in, you feel part of it, you know, you get introduced to who the bands are, you can watch the videos that we've made uh, and then get really drunk as well. Yeah, and then, and then dance, dance to Toto. Dance to Toto as well. And it's showing off new bands is quite a hard thing to do because a lot of new bands don't have much to say for themselves or they may not have a presence, they, don't even, they haven't even cultivated an image yet. So if you can make it interesting in a short format, be that a podcast or a radio show or the videos that we found, if you make it a little bit interesting and folk go, ah, that was that band that played underneath the fourth rail bridge, that's going to be more memorable in people's minds. The Wee John was originally thought of by a man called Craig Carrick. He put on such a diverse range of bands and block, treated them well, gave them money, gave them beer, people could come down to the gigs and see it for free. Such a good thing he had going. So that was obviously a great place for us to do the gigs. He'd seen this opportunity to do what he wanted to call the Detour P Tour. Basically all these really big toilets in Glasgow, the Flying Duck, massive toilet. The Admiral, massive toilet. He was like, look, you could do it in this pub, that pub. And you could just get a group of like-minded people to come along and see these bands in these mental locations and we'll call it like, we'll call it a Detour Peter. Um, and I think Craig came up with this phenomenal idea, but he'd never been able to do it because he hadn't found anyone that would either take a chance on him, go walk in a toilet with him, or I guess have the stupidity or balls to actually do it. The one thing I've learned is that Ali will walk into the toilets with any... Any, any man or woman, I will be in the toilets with. Yeah. And that's really where the evolution of it came. We took a blooming double-decker bus all the way out to Rootham Glen Park and the Ross Clark from Three Glen Woods playing in the river. Um, and then we did one in Edinburgh, started out in the Parliament and ended up having a punk band and a poetry library, stuff like that. And it really, really sort of worked. One of my favourite lineups so far was we had Ian Morrison, right. uh, sort of folk hero, used to be in sort of indie bands, and he did a sort of stand-up folk and poetry thing, and people sat down on the floor and block and listened to it, and half of it was in Gaelic. Then we had Midnight Lion, who were like epic synth pop. Now Santa Island. Now Santa Island. And then we had Carnivores, who are like... Um, basically riff monsters uh, and that just sort of summed up everything that we've been trying to do over the you know the first six months uh -huh. we'd got people there that would watch all these three different types of bands you know a Celtic Connections hero and then guys that are you know who end up doing soundtracks to One Tree Hill and then uh, that's not derogatory not it? derogatory it's you know literally like really mainstream but brilliant uh -huh. pop and then bloody, uh, you know, people get influenced by every time I die. Yeah, exactly. So, um, when else are you going to be able to show off, you know, those three bands together? And that's kind of what we want to do now, on a bigger scale, and just yeah. keep doing that forever. So, an ideal lineup for me has a mixture, of course, of all those genres, because like, between the two of us, we pretty much cover every spectrum of music, except from deep on jazz, because... I well, bloody love free on oh, jazz. Oh, well, there you go, it's covered. Um, but as well, if you think about it practically, you've got to think how you can get people there, how you can get people excited, how are you going to get a badge that nobody knows, you know, how are you going to make them memorable, and that's kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's about making a bit of a racket and... Yeah, doing what we've done on a small scale to a few hundred folk in Glasgow and doing that to 
well, to Britain and to the world, I think. I want to see Dieter turn, on, turn into almost like a video magazine, like a TV show, but on the internet with lots of tiny little features which show off Scottish music in kind of weird and interesting ways so that you're seeing and hearing the music, but you're also kind of getting to know the people behind it as well.